Hey guys, welcome back to a brand new video. And in this video, I'm trying out something a bit different. I am officially starting a new series called Explosive E-Commerce Growth, where I'm gonna be dissecting some of the most successful e-commerce brands to this date and what they did to get to where they're currently at. The strategies they use, I'm gonna be talking about the founders, the whole story, and really just breaking everything down to its fundamentals so that by the end of the presentation, it's very clear how they got to where they're currently at. And so by the end as well, you can take some of the strategies that I'm gonna to cover today and you can implement them in your own e-commerce business or, and this will be most of you, especially if you're watching this channel, you can take the strategies and apply it for your clients for your own e-commerce agency. So really looking forward to the series. I think it's gonna be of a ton of value to a lot of you who have e-commerce agencies. And if, even if you have a, an agency that is really not in the in the e-commerce space, uh, this will still be of insane value. And if you have an e-commerce business, this will also be of insane value. Um, and you'll be able to immediately implement some of the strategies that I'll cover uh, here and kind of you know funnel hack uh, these brands uh, to get insane results for your own brands. Now, before we get right into it, a little bit about me. My name is Jaime and I own an e-commerce agency helping some of the leading e-commerce brands scale to seven and eight figures using paid ads in the fastest, most profitable way. So without further ado, let's get right into it. brand we're going to be dissecting today is high smile you might have uh, seen them uh, you might have seen some of their ads probably and i'm going to be diving deep into the data and revealing how they grew from 20k which was the initial investment for the brand to 100 million in just four years so without further ado let's get started in this presentation i will cover the top high smile growth strategies and how you can apply them to your business and your agency for your clients so here is what we're going to cover number one influencer marketing how to get influencers on board and contact high profile people leverage their audience for a 10x return on investment. And just some of the returns that Highsmile is getting with their influencer marketing is honestly insane. Now, the next thing is omnipresence with paid ads, how Highsmile turbocharge their growth by staying in front of potential customers. And the final thing is social media marketing, the third key to Highsmile's uh, explosive uh, success and what they do to retain loyal customers and have true longevity as a brand. No heads up, there will be a little bonus at the end, so definitely stick around uh, till the end for that. Now, the first thing is influencer marketing. You guys might have seen a lot of their ads, especially if you're in their demographic. Uh, but you know, one of the things that, that they are known for is that they're working with a limited budget, right? And especially as they were starting out, what they focus on was providing value and giving top-notch product to smaller influencers first and just completely for free, right? Because they have such a great product, they almost got this flywheel effect where you know it was just such a great product and so innovative. And not many people were doing this. Obviously, there's there's been a lot of knockoff uh, brands that have come around at since then. But you know, not many uh, brands were doing this, and obviously, people were wanting to try it. And not only that, but you know, the, the way the flywheel uh, uh, effect worked is once the smaller influencers started seeing it on big influencers, which I'll talk about in just a second, like Kylie Jenner or um, uh, Conor McGregor, they wanted to be part of that movement. They wanted to align themselves with top-notch brands that were, you know, re really shaking up the, the market. So. That's really the first thing that they did. They had an insane focus on getting their product to as many people as possible. And really just building this movement and, and, and tribe almost around their product, making it kind of like a lifestyle thing. The next thing is getting big names. So they built up to this. They then focus on the big names. And you know, some of the research that my, my team and I did, uh, you know, we, we saw that the Kylie Jenner contract that they signed, uh, it took them around six months to do that. Uh, going back and forth with Kylie Jenner, making sure that Kylie Jenner aligned with the product, that, that she really liked it, that she really uh, believed in it. Um, uh, until they finally did it. Uh, and the same thing with uh, Conor McGregor. I think they flew to Vegas for one of his fights and then they started the, the partnership. They started the, the conversation there and then they carried through until he finally became a uh, sponsor of their brand. So long story short, they really made sure that their marketing was in place and that they had an amazing product before reaching out to uh, these big names. This actually allowed them to get better leverage and a net over competitors because most of their competitors were paying a higher budgets and, and higher rates for medium-sized influencers. But as I said, they got a lot of attention completely for free because they just had an as such an amazing product. Uh, and so that's what they really focus on. Uh, and then they went for the bigger names. I, I said a lot of brands, you know, coming out in, in the e-commerce space, right? They have a good chunk of money to invest right into it. Uh, and they go straight for the big names. And sure, that's gonna get you a lot of traffic and, and attention, but the conversion rates are not gonna be as high because number one, your product is not quite there. Uh, number two, you haven't really built a brand, a tribe, a movement of people around the product. You haven't really built user-generated content from real people, not just big names. Uh, and that leads to higher conversion. So that is the second thing that they did. And the third thing is measuring ROI. So typically results are 10X um, because what they did is, you know, sure with, with influencer marketing, the kind of the, the drawback is the fact that 
you know, there's not a very clear uh, ROI unless obviously they, they have a, a tracking uh, link, et cetera, et cetera. And so there you can kind of track the ROI, but it's not as clear cut as, um, as you know, for something like Facebook ads, right? What they did though, is they repurposed influencer content on, on their platforms for their ads, for uh, their, you know, their organic content for their platforms. And there they could measure a, a more, much more clear ROI. Um, and if you see some, you know, most of their ads, sure, uh, a lot of them are user generated content, which is just real people, right? But a lot of them are, uh, influencers and then building social proof by saying, Hey, you know, Kylie Jenner or Kim Kardashian or Conor McGregor has, you know, used this advice. And so that's really the first thing that we noticed the influencer marketing side of things. The second thing is omnipresence with paid ads. And this is really what, what we love at, at MoC because our, you know, our passion is building brands online uh, through the power of paid ads. Um, and so the first thing that they did is paid keywords. So what they did is they would show ads to potential customers searching for teeth whitening products. And that's how they almost reigned supreme uh, for this space because when it came to the keywords, they were there, right? Uh, and they got that initial mover uh, advantage as well, which gave them a massive edge when they made this almost a trend, right? And people were searching for teeth whitening products. And so when it became a trend, they were the, the, the go-to brand um, because that bought a lot of keywords uh, and they were doing quite a lot of SEO. When it came to the audience targeting, and I won't get very specific into the, uh, into the Facebook ads ninja stuff, uh, but for the targeting, basically, you know, what, what we read is that they started pretty, pretty small uh, when it came to the targeting. I think they were targeting purely women from age, you know, I think it was 18 to around 25. And then by changing up the story and the ad copy and uh, kind of their unique selling point, they started broadening in their targeting. One of the main changes that they did was they started appealing to men. Because prior to that, there didn't seem to be a massive demand from the male market for these products. But then they realized that you know, th this trend was also catching up to the male audience and men just like women wanted to have a perfect smile because one of the things that they conveyed is that a nice smile is one of the, the first things that a, a woman looks at and, and picks up on a man. So that is the second thing. And the final thing is retargeting. So the, the thing about uh, what high smile is that they have an incredible retargeting system in place. They have pure omnipresence when it comes to uh, their paid ads, right? If you go on their Instagram, you're gonna get retargeting pretty pretty much everywhere on apps. You're gonna get retargeting on audience network, uh, Facebook, Instagram, and they have just in insane retargeting in place. Uh, they have Snapchat ads, and so they have complete omnipresence across all social media platforms. And for example, for our clients, I actually don't recommend they do this at the start uh, because we wanna narrow down on one single platform, get that very profitable, and then expand out, right? Because you don't wanna tap into all platforms if you don't know what the winning, you know, from an offer is, for example, the winning targeting is. Once you have a very clear idea of what that looks like, for example, on Facebook ads, then you can tap into other platforms and just kind of duplicate your success, right? Um, but, you know, as we can see here, the, the retargeting system that they had is just insane. Um, you know, retargeting ads typically perform 10, 10x better uh, and 76% more likely to get clicked than a cold audience. What they did is their videos of influencers and testimonials from real customers. Uh, if that didn't get a sale, then those customers would be put straight into this retargeting system uh, that would predictably churn up customers on pretty much on autopilot. So that is the second thing. And here uh, we, we just have a few uh, results from their Instagram ad campaigns. Uh, so we've got a 5x return on ad spend, 90% increase in male customers. So that's what, what I was talking about. And that was a really big win for them. And the fact that they just broaden up their audience and that's really what made them have such a huge growth. I think in the third year, they had something like uh, 40 million uh, in, in revenue and then they just, you know, scaled up to, to 100 million. It was referred to as the doubling rule playing to their advantage, but uh, we can see that that was a really, really big, uh, big move for them and uh, quite important for their growth. And 40 million uh, is the number of 18 to 24 year olds reached. And so that is a lot of people that have seen their products. When it comes to uh, Facebook, uh, 11x uh, lower cost per purchase compared to other channels, uh, uh, almost a 10x return uh, on ad spend, which is pretty crazy, um, and a uh, 21% uh, higher click-through rate compared to other platforms. So that's why you know that, that's why I love Facebook ads. In my opinion, it is the best service to offer clients uh, if you guys are an agency and if you're an e-commerce brand. Uh, from what we've seen, my, my team and I at MoWC, it is by far the best platform, really where you can get the highest returns on investments and where you can see the most profitable growth. So the next thing is a big thumbs up. If you guys are enjoying this video, go ahead and drop a big thumbs up. It really helps the channel a ton, and I'd really appreciate it. So go ahead and drop a big thumbs up and let's get back into it. The final thing is social media marketing. Now, first things first is the power of story. And this is one of the things that we are very bullish on at uh, Mosi, my agency, uh, is the storytelling side of things, right? There's so many brands, and this is particularly important for e-commerce brands. If you want to sell a product, you need to tell a story, especially 
when it comes to social media, right? When people hop on Facebook or Instagram or TikTok, whatever it is, they are there to read stories about their family, their friends, their pets, whatever it is, right? They are there to be entertained. They're not there to read some business ad, right? They are there to be entertained, to read stories, to really read captivating and compelling stories. And so when you can tell a story, hook them in, tap into their pain points, trigger their emotions, then it is much easier to sell a product, okay? Because essentially people need to buy into the story before they buy a product. And, and not only that, but we want them to buy not just a product, but into the brand. And that's what, you know, Highsmart has done really well and, and some of the best e-commerce brands have done really well is the fact that people are not just buying a product, they are buying into the brand. And that is a massive difference. And, and that's one of the things that we tell our, our clients a lot is the fact that, sure, we want to get a lot of sales with our, our Facebook ads, but we want to have true longevity. We want to have a client that just, doesn't just buy once, but we want to make sure that we increase that lifetime value of that customer so that there's a very clear strategy on how to have them replenish the product. And if it's not a high replenishment rate product, how can we get them to come back and win them over again and again and again? Or how can we get them to refer us to other people if it's just kind of like a, a one-off uh, thing, right? So that is the first thing. They really built a great story and lifestyle around a seamless, boring product. And that's one of the things that they did amazingly well is that they took a very boring industry and they you know, they had a, a just complete spin on it, right? And they made it fun. They made it um, appealing. They, they made it exciting, right? And so... That's really uh, the first thing that we uh, that that they did when it came when it came to social media. The second thing is real results. So High Smile spends ten million per year on social media marketing. The result explosive growth, right? And that you know at the end of the day, like that, that's one of the things that you will realize from this presentation. The way they were able to build the brand in such profitable and fast manner was by tapping into the power of social media marketing. Um, with influencer marketing, with you know paid ads, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and it gives you just an idea of the insane potential of paid ads and, and social media marketing. And that is why, if you build an agency, you should be very excited for your clients, right? It's really, the reason why when I pitch my service, uh, it, you know, it's, it, I'm just so incredibly excited because I know the insane value of, of tapping into these social media channels and and just insane growth that you can see uh, if you do it well, right? And so, if you can convey the insane value that these channels can have in their growth, the product and the service that you're selling to clients, it actually almost sells itself. Uh, right so that is really the second thing and the final thing is brand loyalty monthly rolling profit from recurring purchases is envisioned uh, to be high smiles number one income stream uh, their social media keeps customers coming back and that's really a massive key to high smiles success and, and to this type of business model the fact that not only do they acquire a customer at a very cheap rate and, and maybe they get a 10x return on their investment on that front end offer but this is a recurring purchase right most people have a monthly subscription and it's rolling month by month and so the, the lifetime value of a high smile customer is quite high it's not just the front end offer right so they're extremely profitable on the front end but then on the back end it's it's just insane right and so and so it kind of allows them to bully the competition because they can just outspend the competition on the front end offer right uh, which they're doing, I'm sure, because they know that the back end value is so strong, right? And so that is, you know, one of the things that they, they've done amazingly well. Not only do they have these monthly recurring purchases, but they also have new customers coming through the door pretty much on autopilot. And that is a very blissful position to be in because you have that predictability for your business. The fact that you know there's this many uh, customers that are going to renew their subscription this month, and that's going to mean X for your business, right? And you're not having to rely on new customers every single time. So that's really the brand loyalty. And the final thing that I will say on that is that it lends itself to incredible brand loyalty um, where people just keep telling their friends about it and it really builds this movement uh, around the brand. So that is social media marketing. And the final thing is uh, a, a few other points. So as I said, uh, you know, they, they tapped into new demographics and, and this is one of the things that they were really good at, the fact that, you know, they saw this demographic working and then they said, okay, how can we tell a different story and tap into other demographics and grow the brand that way, right? They, they didn't just stay on one single demographic. And, and that's one where I see a lot of e-commerce brands as well um, you know, for sure, is the fact that, sure, you might have dominated one single demographic, but what, what can you do to maybe switch the story around, but tap into new demographics, add value to new uh, segments and, and cohorts of people, right? And so originally, a high smile demographic was mostly women, uh, 15 to 24, uh, but now they're experiencing the same success with male min uh, millennials on social media. And as I said, that was a really, really big move uh, for them. The next thing is engagement. So high smile builds a uh, really strong social media engagement by reliably posting regularly, keeping their audience connected, um, you know, it's, it's really just a whole new way of building a brand and they've just completely done it uh, purely online and they've built a movement, as I said, right? They built this organic audience. And so not only do they have this paid ads and, you know, tapping into a cold audience, but they already have, they, they also have this very strong organic audience. And so while competitors are paying for that traffic, they own that traffic and they can send that traffic to new offerings, new products, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, anything that they make from that is ROI positive because they own that audience. And the final thing is social sharing. So strong content strategy creates shareability. Uh, and that's one of the things that uh, they've had insane success with uh, that viral component, right? The fact that 
Uh, people would tell their, their friends about it, uh, even if they didn't buy, right? Uh, they would tell the friends about it. And I really hope that it is one of those purchases that you can just buy immediately, that it's, it's kind of like an impulse purchase. You don't have to really think about it that much. Um, so that is social media marketing. And the final thing is a little bonus for uh, those of you who have stayed until the end, which is the founders. Uh, and this is one of, one of the things that really excites me as, a, as, an, uh, as an entrepreneur myself, to really just read about the founders and, and, and hear their story and really the way they think. Because they, if they've built a, a $100 million company at the age of, and you guys will see at the age of 24 and 22, uh, we've got Alex and Nick, you know, they, they must be doing something right, right? I really love to just pick their brain. I really just watch some of the interviews that I've done to, to understand how they think about building a brand online. And they build their success down to three things. The first thing is thinking long-term. And this is one of the things that I preach all the time to my e-commerce clients. And, and one of the things that I preach all the time to my uh, students, uh, you know, building agencies, the fact that, look, most people think so short term that by just thinking long term, you are bound to get the easiest edge you can get in business, right? Just think a bit long term. And for an agency, quite frankly, you don't have to think, you know, 10 years from now because it's simply just a cash flow business that's going to generate incredible cash. It's not the type of business like a high smile. We're not trying to build a top five business in the world like they are. But at the same time, thinking long term is also going to add massive value to your agency, knowing that if you just start small building incredible authority, incredible social proof and getting medium sized clients, incredible results, then you can go for the larger clients that pay you insane retainers, right? And that really fulfill you. Um, and that's one of the things that I, I, I did with my agency and the way I approach my agency. So long story short, um, you know, one of the things that I, I picked up from them that, that I really, really liked is we don't want to be a trend or a flash in the pan. We don't want to get in, get rich and get out. And that's really one of the things that I loved uh, about them. The fact that, you know, you sure in, in four years, they've literally built a $100 million company, but they're in it for the long run. And, and one of the things that, I, as I said, uh, they're trying to do is they're trying to be a top five business in the world, right? And so that is a, a pretty big mission, but I really do believe that thinking long-term really brought them uh, this insane success that they are having. The second thing is revolutionary. They did not just want to be a bit better and a bit cheaper. They want to take a boring industry and completely revolutionize it, you know, completely turn it upside down. And that is one of the reasons why they were so successful because they were able to think differently and to ask questions, you know, why is this done this way, right? Can we do it this way instead? Can we just completely uh, switch the, the, the whole script upside down, right? And, and do it all way. That's really one of the keys of a truly successful e-commerce brand. The fact that they think differently and they take an, an existing thing, right? For example, teeth widening products have been around for a long time, but they completely revolutionize the whole market, the whole industry. So that is the second thing. And the final thing is consumer behavior. So they have a very good understanding of consumer behavior and market trends. So they knew exactly where the brand aligned in the market. They were a student of the market and they consistently took a look at the data, see what was coming back from the ads, see what was resonating with the market, and then you know iterate according to feedback. And that is extremely valuable for both agency owners. You're not having this approach for your outreach and seeing what lands best on your ideal target market, which are really your prospects. Uh, then you're not going to be as successful. Uh, and the same thing applies for e-commerce. If you're not taking a look at the data from your ads or the data that's coming back from your influencer marketing campaigns, then you're simply going to get buried by brands like these who actually take a look at the data. So guys, that is it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed this breakdown. If you did drop a big thumbs up, it really helps a ton with the algorithm and I'd really appreciate it. Let me know if I should continue doing this series and really dissecting everything that uh, really successful e-commerce brands have done to get to where they're currently at. The final thing is if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel, there's so much content coming out on entrepreneurship and a 360 approach to social media marketing needs with a specific focus on sales, outreach, and e-commerce. So if you don't want to miss that out, go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And as always, I hope everything is going well in your entrepreneurship journey and I will see you in the next one. Peace.